Stuart, you've squeezed 65 players into your elite and Saxons playing squad. How difficult a summer selection meeting was that? It's been very difficult to actually nail it down to, to 65 and obviously within that you've got 33 in the senior and uh, 32 in the Saxons. We very much see it as one squad. Um, as we know, there's always movement between the two squads, um, particularly as the season rolls on. You know, there are a lot of players in the Saxons who I know will figure in the senior team this year as, as has happened in every year. Um, but the top uh, 33 of the players we feel at the moment are best suited to take us forward. Let's talk about some of these new players. What impressed you about Mac Vesic's performances in the summer? Well, I think it was the way he fitted in. Uh, you know, he, he's obviously played a, a good level um, with Worcester and uh, had a big uh, influence with our 20s programme over the previous year. So to do that and then to come into the, uh, into the squad and fit in seamlessly uh, was excellent. Obviously, he came in in an experienced back row with the likes of Tom Wood, uh, Ben Morgan playing alongside him, but um, he looked comfortable at this level. Uh, he looked ready to play at this level. Uh, and obviously he's made a summer move to Gloucester and I'm sure he'll be, he'll be figuring well for his club at the start of the season. Some other young men who shone on their debuts in Argentina, Christian Wade, um, involved in three of the tries in the first test and then Marlon Yard scoring two of them his own. Um. Yeah, I mean, I mean, both of them are you know, exciting young players and uh, Christian obviously rewarded with that uh, step up to the Lions and I'm sure he'll have learnt a lot from that experience on the back of a great Premiership season. Um, Marlon uh, took his opportunities well, particularly in the second test, but also if you look back to that Barbarians game as well. Uh, and he's got a real um, point of difference as a player in terms of power and pace uh, and desire to want the ball. A desperately tight call in, in midfield around Carl Eastman and Jonathan Joseph. Um, can you explain the rationale behind that choice? Yeah, I think um, it's difficult when you've only got four slots uh, you can fill. And I could think of six or seven really that, that are, are, are really viable contenders. You know, Anthony Allen, um, I'm sure, will get his opportunity. He had a great second half of the season. Uh, Joel Tompkins missed out on the tour through injury as well. Um, so, so both those two will, I'm sure, will come good in the, in the first half of the season. Um, and JJ a bit unlucky to be dropped down, but it's more a reflection of what Kyle brought um, from an attacking point of view to our, to our game. Uh, and also a little bit of, in order to work with the players, you've got to have them in your EPS squad. Um, JJ's been in there a while, so we've had a good chance to look at him and work with him during the Autumn Internationals. Uh, Kyle's obviously had limited time in relation to the others, even Joel and Anthony's had more than Kyle. So we want to have that uh, flexibility to work with Kyle and see if he has got um, enough potential to become a starting uh, international player with England. And, uh, you know, a lot of what happens at the start of the season with his club Bath will, uh, will have an impact on that. OK, another Bath man, David Atwood, is back in your squad after a while. What does, what does he bring? What does he add to your resources? I think um, you know he came back in uh, on the back of a strong second half of the season, and what I asked him to do in uh, Argentina, he delivered. You know, he ran the line out well, um, showed good leadership. Uh, he's still got areas in his game to work on, and he knows that. But our set piece was strong with him in. You know, he's a big man. Uh, he had some physicality to our side, uh, and um, again, you know, Bath couldn't speak highly enough of him, and uh, I'm sure he'll be set for a good start to the season. And again, he'll be wanting to push hard for that uh, that slot in uh, in November. How do you juggle the numbers game of picking three fly halves, three full backs, two or three hookers, two or three scrum halves when you, when you choose these squads? It's difficult. Um, y you know, it is a numbers game. You know, you've only got 33 picks. You know, you want to reward those players who, who've played well for England in the past, um, you should show some loyalty. Uh, but equally, you want to develop new players to come into your, uh, to your squad. So I think we've, we've achieved both. You know, we've got the players in there who've done well for England, but by the same token, we always need to evolve our squad. We always need to keep it moving forward and uh, make changes when change is necessary. Um, as I said, this is a starting point. It's a pre-season squad um, and things do change and they have changed in every time you know, I've been involved. So uh, uh, it's not the end point for a lot of the players who aren't picked, but uh, it's a start point for the season. Uh, of the two hookers, one is Dylan Hartley, who served an 11 week suspension this summer after being set up in the Premiership final. Did you have any qualms about retaining him? Yeah, I mean, I had a long, long, hard think about it. And also, more importantly, I had a long conversation with him. So I met him a couple of weeks ago, one to one. And I wanted to talk through and understand from my point of view exactly what happened on that day and, and how it unfolded uh, and what his view on it now was. And, uh, you know, I wanted to be reassured that he understands where um, the line is uh, and, and what's right and what's wrong in terms of discipline. You know, he reassures me that um, he does understand that and that he's obviously disappointed with 
what have folded for him for the team, particularly Northampton in the final, and also um, the subsequent actions he uh, he got faced with. But he accepts that. You know, he knows he did wrong. He's going to have to work hard now to um, to get back into that starting shirt. But uh, I think there's enough I've seen of Dylan to uh, to reassure me that he, he deserves this next chance.